What is going on? Welcome back to the Rare Element Sports Card Podcast. My name is Aaron. I'm here with my boy Jeremy. What's good, my brother? Oh, you know, kicking it and chilling, man. Fucking feeling like feeling like my chair's a little small today because I'm <laughs> eating like a fat fuck the last couple days. <laughs> Like my chair's getting tight. Yeah, man. Shit. <laughs> Suck it there, good boy. That's not good, dude. I, I went. Oh my god, I went to go get some lunch today, and I went to this little Los Cornales. I went to a little, you know, local Mexican spot, and I got got my put my order in, got my shit going, and then fucking, <laughs> I went to go sit down to wait for my food to come out, and I walk it, I walk over, and I sit down, and I didn't fit, dude. <laughs> I didn't fit. I was like, holy oh, shit. And then, like, the lady that was there, you know, she's a nice-looking lady. So I didn't want to be like, oh. <laughs> so I was, like, waiting for her, dude, waiting for her to go to the back. She went to the back. I was like, <laughs> squeezed my fat ass out of that fucking booth. Half your gut on top, half your gut on like, the bottom. And it was kind of, it's like. <laughs> yeah. It was in there, bro. With those fucking <laughs> diners and shit, bro. A lot of those diners, they like to crowd those booths together. Bro. It was tight, dude. And some sometimes you can move the seats back or you can move the table a little bit. This one was like everything was stuck. So I was like, fuck. I got to wedge my fucking ass out of here. It was Just terrible. Sit on the edge. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little embarrassing. I was like, God dang it. I got to I got to take I got to like take it easy and go yeah. on a diet. You got to analyze the the fucking seat situation next time i know i gotta look at it like am i gonna fit there probably not let me go sit over there but yeah it was it was a rough one but yeah they just fucking pack them in there like that (laughs) yeah it is what it is i guess um but you want to jump into the pod my brother yep so our podcast is made up of three elements uh the first element this week is cardboard which is our sports card news element we're going to have a little bit of wiggity wax, and then we're going to finish it up with some sports. You ready to rip that fucking shit? Rip that shit. Damn it, I forgot to bring a pack in. Oh, I know. Spaced it. It's like a little too much of this? Yeah, <laughs> mostly. Or not enough of this? No, uh, way too much. <laughs> uh, but our first topic under the cardboard this week is about fanatics. Um, I guess at the Tops Fanatic Summit, they went down like a long l- list of people that they brought into the team. And apparently, they're calling them the Avengers. So uh-huh. they're bringing in the the dream team of of uh, corporate folk. Um, the main one that I that like I took notice to was they hired this gentleman named Ken Turner, and he is the new chief marketing. He has a new chief marketing role for Fanatics. And in the art and like some of the interviews I heard, it, it was kind of like the visionary officer. So I was like, hmm, interesting. Um, apparently, he came from Red Bull. So he was uh, formerly with Red Bull. Um, so he's coming in to give the hobby some wings, apparently. And it begs me to like, it brings me to the question like, is this like, does this mean Josh Luber's fucking out? I mean, he was the visionary guy and kind of marketing guy and haven't really heard from him. I have no idea, bro. Fucking, I know that fucking Red Bull blew up and shit, but I mean, they were kind of like just the first to, uh, the first main energy drink, really. You know yeah. What I mean? But they fucking marketed the shit out of that. Yeah, dude. I went to a bunch of concerts and they were handing out free Red Bulls. They had the Red Bull girls. Like it was, it was like a a big marketing rush. And, and yeah. I don't know. They did pretty well with that. Yeah. Um. Kind of. I'm kind of like. I'm happy with it. It seems like yeah. that's the right kind of direction that they're, you know, I would like to see the hobby going to. Um, what do you think? Do you think, um, do you think bringing in a dream team of fucking like these type of corporate people is going to make the difference? Or do you think that, what, what do you think is going to make the main difference in, in like fanatics turning everything around and bringing it back to the 10 X number that they're trying to get to? I don't even know, man. Who knows? Um, I I don't know. I, I I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's so it's it's obviously so impossible to predict the future or even what's what's going to be actually good. You know, we might think that one thing is good, but then if if it happens, I mean, then freaking Skynet takes over and shit. Bro. <laughs> Skynet went live. So uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, and also, Avengers is like 
fucking a decade ago. We're in phase four here with Marvel. Guys. I know, right? <laughs> Where what's the newest? I don't shit? know. I think they're gonna start trying to bring in like X Men and shit like that. But I don't even fucking know. I'm just I'm just joking. <laughs> Black Panther. Yeah. No, I think it's still Avengers, but like it's the new Avengers. Oh yeah. Hmm. I dude, I'm so fucking far behind on those movies. Like my brother, he is Mister Marvel. He's all yeah. all about it. Uh, his whole house is decorated with like fucking <laughs> like characters, dude. It's it's pretty cool actually, but like yeah. that's his thing. And I told him I was I went to go stay with him when he was living in Denver for a couple of days, and he's like, well, you know, where where are you at with the Marvel all the Marvel movies? And I was like, bro, I'm like I'm like at Iron Man, <laughs> and he's like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, well, we're sitting you down, and we're gonna smoke some weed, and we're gonna fucking <laughs> we're gonna watch some movies. So we we got to like. Iron Man 3. In, yeah, like, I was going to say Iron Man was like the first one. Dude. It was pretty close <laughs> to the first one. It was like the Hulk and then Iron Man. And Hulk doesn't really even uh, go tie into the story really very much at all. Like the very, very end, there's like one scene, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I watched about four movies that weekend. Yeah. We watched about four. And I got I got to, I think it was, no, it was Thor. It was like one of the yeah. s- second Thor, I think. Watched the first one and. The first couple of Thors and Iron Man were pretty much the first ones, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he, he put it in the order that, not the order that they came out in, but like the Marvel order, I guess. So yeah. like, that's where we were moving. Yeah. And then I stalled out there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's where I, that's where I still am. Yeah. So I have no references. I don't know any, anything. I just know that fucking uh, Iron Man was dope. Like he was, he was, his <laughs> movies were cool. But I don't know, man. I'm I'm kind of wondering if that if this is the end of Josh Luber. I'm also wondering if I don't know. I I don't know if the hobby is the sort of business that would be like influenced by a huge marketing spree. Well, that's kind of what I was kind of getting at, bro. I don't know if it's great if it's a good thing to grow it that gigantic or that quickly or get so many people so involved so quickly and it be a fad it, a fad isn't necessarily a good thing we don't want it to be a fad you yeah know what i mean like yeah so i don't know we'll see i think good steady healthy growth is going to be the best not necessarily gigantic push to fucking yeah to 10x everything automatically right or, you know recoup or all. even double or whatever right you know yeah that's true but we'll see We'll see what happens. Like that, you know, uh, that sounds fine and great. And uh, and it, it, in order to create like another gigantic boom, that would probably be something that would need to happen. But the boom's not necessarily good, right? It really hasn't. Yeah. It really hasn't ha- added to the health of the hobby. With if that, I- if anything, it was detrimental because it, it it was growing right at that time already. Anyway, right? And then it, it was blew up and it soured a lot of people. So who knows what would have happened if it wasn't for that? I mean, not, and you know, granted that. Who knows? It did bring a lot of people in and did blow things up, and now there's tons of people talking about it, and it's it's yeah, that's it's growing too. But it were, it was just starting to kind of grow health health healthily healthily. I think that's I think that's a word. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a right word. before yeah. that anyway. Yeah, you know, so that's true. I had that steroid injection and fucking just boom yeah everybody po- got popped on steroids <laughs> <laughs> everybody <laughs> everybody pissed hot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true that's true bro <laughs> but i don't know we'll see i mean growth is good but i don't know if explosive growth is necessarily good yeah that's true because like anything that like you said just like you said anything that blows up like that is bound to just bound to drizzle out then it's just a fat mm-hmm. yeah. and it's not organic growth it's not mm-hmm. real growth it's like yeah. uh yeah it's artificial and yeah and like you said too also it, it could sour a lot of people and that you don't want that really no you know and there's something too like if you if something like that is going to drop you you weren't really going to be into it for the long haul anyway exactly so there's that as well but i don't know we will see we'll keep an eyeball on on fanatics and watch their moves and see what goes on because this is the shit, man. This is the shit we love. So yeah. I'm I'm definitely interested. Um Well, who knows what kind of uh contract they signed with Luber or whatever or Right. You know. They might be writing that contract out like, all right, we've got another year. Come up with a couple more ideas and then 
GTFHO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Zero Cool isn't really going anywhere, and that was pretty much Luber's baby. I haven't heard shit about that for a while. Fuck no. I haven't heard shit about that. I haven't tr- heard shit from him. I haven't see he hasn't even posted on his IG. You know, I haven't heard anything. Hmm. It's kind of, I don't know, kind of interesting. And um, I don't know. I, I didn't necessarily have a, an issue with Josh Luber. I never really had a problem with him myself, no. you know. Yeah. Just, I don't really care. <laughs> 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 I mean, I care of what he was going to do, but, like, I don't know. Like, he was the big name. Right. But Right. And it made sense, like. Some of the sneaker and sports card stuff kind of crosses over a little, I guess. But yeah, you know, it collector wise, and it wasn't the like, oh, Josh Luber. <laughs> yeah, it was more just cool to make fun of his name, really, than anything. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be a tough one, huh? Yeah, that had to be a tough one. That'll get you wearing nail polish real quick, I guess. And you call Josh Luber up all, all the time. and Lubered up. <laughs> oh, we don't have our light on. Oh, snap. I was like, I was wondering why the it doesn't look the same. That'd be cool to get that sound Turn on the, the board. Lightsaber on. Don't we have lightsabers on there? I thought you had lightsabers on I, there. I did at one point, but they were loud and fucked. Oh, yeah. I recorded them kind of like fucked up. It was like a lightsaber battle. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like... It was... Yeah. I, I, just a... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that'd be a cool one. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Have to get that on there. I still haven't put the other sounds either. God damn it, slacker, All right, All right. slacker. But um, we'll move on, bro. Um, we'll get off of that. We will talk about a little bit of PSA action. Um, looks like Gemrate put out some more um, info for February. And uh, do you hear that noise? Yeah. Oh, I know what it is. Something dragon. Yeah, it's the mic stand here, and I keep hitting it with, with uh. this cord. Um, but PSA, it looks like, according to Jim Rate, last month of February, they graded 18,000 Julio Rodriguez cards, bro. That's fucking crazy, dude. 18,000. Just Julio. Um, Do you... I mean, Is that his base, or that's all Just cards? all Julios. So that's all yeah. those... Mm-hmm. His base was somewhere like 1,500, something like that. They had that broken out, too. And just that that base update, I think, it was like 1,500 just last month. Wow. 18,000 Julios. Is he, like, <laughs> on his, is he on his way to be the next Zion? I mean, it sure sounds like it even more, probably. I mean, wow. That's just PSA, too. Yeah, so. that's just, yeah, just PSA. Crazy, huh? Fucking oh, and bonkers. It looks like there was also like fourteen thousand Jordans graded, bro. Fourteen thousand Michael Jordan cards. He hasn't had cards since like the early two thousands, you know? Right. Like how many fucking Jordan cards I are mean, out aside there? Aside from I guess uh, that stupid metal shit or like gimmicky upper deck shit. Yeah. I mean those probably count, but I don't know how many people are there, there's some people grading them obviously, but Right. Right. So he has had cards technically. Right. Technically. That's true. Goodwin champions and right. Oh, I forgot about those ones. There's been yeah. some shit where they forced him in, mm-hmm. and he just in street clothes or <laughs> fucking uh, airbrushed fucking basketball clothes mm-hmm. or like fucking basketball jersey. I don't even know if he's has any where he's even got a basketball in his hands or anything. Actually, the the uh, metal or whatever the those he's like an airbrushed basketball jersey kind of. Yeah, those metal ones. Yeah, but. Most of the rest of them, he's just in, like, fucking plain clothes, dude. Mm -hmm. For sure. Just a picture of him, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Chilling. Just chilling. How how far do you you think they could milk Michael Jordan, dude? I mean, my God. Yeah, that's rough. That's what, like, like I was saying a while back. I mean, you know, everybody, they... The thing is, is almost thankfully... They can't make Michael Jordan in all the other fucking sets, bro. Could you right. imagine how many Jordan cards it would be if they could still print Michael Jordan in fucking Panini cards, bro? Oh, my God. <laughs> That'd be so many. There'd still be a fucking Jordan insert every year, bro. Like oh, a, a yeah. specific Jordan like a set, dude. Right. There was like 12 Jordan cards. Yeah. And this little subs- the Air Jordan, <laughs> this, that, The whatever. Prism Prism Jordan collection. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's true. They're getting, that, they're getting there with Julio, too. Like, man. 
How many Julios are there going to be? That's a lot, bro. Do you think that, like, I mean, I'm sure it's kind of obvious, I guess, now that I think about it, but, like, it's just watering down these players and, like, their values are going to have to, they're going to have to take a hit, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's only, there's only so many people that want that card, bro. And the thing is, is there's a lot of people that are hoarding that shit. Like, there's people that are sending in 100 of them, probably. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 100%. And they're going to try and cash in and, I don't know, man. Mm. Man, that's How crazy. Sell it for more than grading fees, really. I know, right? The ten, sure, a little, a bump, I'm sure, not a ton. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just, I guess, it kind of just. If depends. you hurry the fuck up and do it right now, you could probably get fifty bucks pop for those. Yeah. Kind of yeah. depends on how well he plays, too. I guess. I mean, like yeah. if he blows up and starts hitting 40, 50 There's home guys runs, that are fucking all stars and killing it. That they're fucking rookie. Foils or, or silvers or, or chromes and shit are like PSA tens are like fifty bucks. Yeah, not, that's but like an Otani PSA ten and chrome is like three hundred. You know, so I mean, it just depends on how well he, they do. Um, Aaron Judge stuff his his base his base chromes are like two something, um, yeah. but like the paper stuff probably not for much longer though. You don't think? Mm-mm. I don't know. Mostly a lot of it's because of this pop count shit, bro. I, I don't know. I don't see anything that's not numbered stand very high for very long. No? Especially with there's no... Uh, it's obvious that they're printing more and more of everything every yeah. day. Yeah, they definitely are. Those guys were in 17, 18, so they might have a chance to survive a little bit, but... I have less less cards out there I than don't know, these there's guys. There's so many guys that have accomplished so much that their PSA 10s are going for like... 50 to 80 bucks, dude. Hmm. Silvers sometimes and hollows and refractors and shit. I'm like, holy fuck. You gotta be kidding me. It's pretty nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are still doing okay ish, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We shall see. It, do you think that's um, kind of stuck with baseball more than other sports? Oh, I think basketball is the worst for sure. You think so? I mean, uh, Luca, Luca PSA ten pr- prison PSA tens are still three hundred fifty yeah, bucks. Yeah, cherry pick the top guys maybe, but anything other than that, no. Well, yeah, I mean, you're not gonna have the lower end guy or the, like I'm the. I'm not talking lower. I'm talking anybody other than the top two or three. No, I don't. Not in basketball. Like Jason Tatum's rookies are still yeah, pretty high. Yeah, those guys are four or five years old. I'm talking guys that are like the last couple of years. Mm. Where they're printing more and more. Yeah, like Jaw. Well, I mean, I'm just talking cards that I've comp trying to buy at shows, bro. And I look them up thinking it's going to be over a hundred dollars and it's like $50, $50 card and shit. Hmm. Cards to buy from people. No, I'm not trying to sell them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I'm like, fuck. <laughs> kind of don't even want to buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I already told you I was going to buy it. Yeah. Fuck. And I literally look it up and then I still, I mean, I usually don't end up buying it because then I got to offer them. Something or 30, 40 bucks for the fucking thing, something you know low. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So it just depends who it is, I guess, too. And their cards from a few years ago are still surviving a little bit because with the way that they're proving every year more and more and more fucking shit's going to print it, it's tough. And even the number shit's tough, dude. You get a fucking uh, card numbered out of 10, there's fucking four different parallels numbered out of 10. So it's technically numbered out of like 40. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Four different golds. Flash. Disco. Wave. True, true gold. Vinyl. Gold wave. Yeah. It's true. So, I don't know. At a certain point, it's... Even the serial numbering shift, shit's getting tough. You almost have to uh, build a little spreadsheet and go across all the sets and say, okay, well, how many cards numbered out of 10 are there? Or, you know what I mean? It's... They just add more and more parallels every year and more and more inserts every year. I don't know, it's watering shit down. It's fucking, it's creating the fake fucking rarity. And then once people start doing the math, they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not rare. Hold on a minute. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, I and mean, I don't think that that's a fucking horrible thing that, that fucking those basically base cards are only worth $100 as a PSA 10. That's kind of where they should be, you know what I mean, really. But that's just... I don't know. There's nothing special about it. 
you know, yeah. other than being a PSA 10. And when there's 18,000 of them, then it's not special anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Well, man, now, I'd rather have a card. Now that, now that I'm have a card numbered out of twenty five than a PSA ten that eighteen thousand of them. Oh, for sure, for sure. A raw numbered out of twenty five, for sure. But I, 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 I don't agree that there's nothing special about them because a rookie card is special. It just is. It just, it just is. Yeah. You know, it, it just has been forever. And anybody who buys a player, they always want their rookie card. Yeah, if it's you numbered know I mean? or autographed, maybe. Yeah, I I don't I I just think oh, rookie cards are special. Well, there will yeah. always be a demand for them, but yeah. I don't I don't think they should be worth more than hundred bucks. No, ever, ever, ever. Not really. So like even like Patrick Mahomes stuff, you don't think his base card should be worth more than hundred bucks? Nope. Wow. I don't. There's too many of them, dude. Wow. That's so, just my opinion. But, right. Right. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't try to buy none of that shit ever. Hmm. Very rarely. Parallels and shit, maybe. But. Hmm. Well, now that I'm depressed. <laughs> I'm not trying to no, depress I'm just, anybody. I'm just, I'm just kidding, bro. I'm just saying that um, I just go more for numbered shit. You know, at least you know how many there are. Sometimes. <laughs> now they're double printing numbered shit. Yeah, but at least it's documented. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can go and do the math. And that's why the whole case hit thing is a little deceiving and shit, too, anymore. There's so many fucking case hits. Like, I buy them because they flip quickly, but I don't buy them to ever hang on to, really, unless it's, like, even the yellow ways and shit, usually I get rid of. Really? I've got that yeah. Joker, and I don't know. They're doing so good. It's going to be hard to hang on to that card, bro. You're going to sell it? I might I might be a buyer. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hard to hang on to that thing through the playoffs, you know. I don't know. It's going to go up pretty crazy. I'm actually want to hurry up and get it graded. But yeah, did you send it? Not yet. No, no. I need to get another stack enough enough to send. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then I've got. I mean, I've got some PC cards to send, but it's hard to recoup the grading fees on PC cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you don't really. You don't. You just kind of want them slabbed up for to keep them in the case, keep them yeah. safe. And yeah. you know, there's nothing wrong with those cards. I just don't think that they should be as crazy valuable it's just they're not rare you know and, and to say they're not special yeah they're special they're a rookie card but they're the least special of the rookie card <laughs> yeah for yeah. sure yeah for sure lowest little rung on the totem pole for yeah. sure yeah and yeah. they'll always be desirable they'll always be wanted they'll mm-hmm. always be um sought after you know yeah yeah for sure but i don't know if they'll ever be worth i mean and i could be totally wrong but it's it's tough for me to pay high dollar for something that doesn't at least have a little rarity to it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But um yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. PSA's cranking them out left and right. So I mean eighteen thousand Julios in one month, that's that's a crazy number. It's fucking insane, dude. That's a crazy number. Dude, they're cranking fast again too. I got fucking Damn, I'm trying to think when I sent that. But um, my my 20-card order that I sent, what, not even three weeks ago, was already in the second stage of wow. grading. Nice. So That's like quick. One more stage before it comes home. Yeah. Our second stage of, uh, not grading, review or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's, that's flying. quick, bro. That's flying. Yeah, good deal. I mean... Good. I mean, they've had all the time. They had the backlog. They yeah. worked through all that. They've got the kinks out, and looks like they're just like a machine, just well oiled right now. They're just fucking stomping their throat, foot on everybody's throat, dude. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, SGC was a play there for a minute, but it's kind of just because they come back fast. It still doesn't really matter, dude. It's still seventy percent of what a PSA ten is. Yeah, if they can keep cranking them back in a month. There's no point to send them anywhere else, dude. Yeah, it's true. If you're going for value. Right. And, I mean, they cost about the same. I mean, I think, what what is SGC now? Like 18, you can, 17, you can 18 go down bucks? to 18 if you go through the right place, but mm-hmm. it's actually, yeah, more. If you, it, well, well, PSA, you can send one card for 25 Right. So they're all about the same. They're pretty dang close. And if you're going to be, I mean, if it's within a couple of dollars per card, send them to PSA. 
It's just what it is. Yep. Yeah, for sure. That's pretty quick. Dang, I can't believe they're still moving that fast. Damn. It's insane, bro. Yeah, and they're still pumping out a million cards a month. Like, they're just still, just like a well, like, once again, a well oiled machine just pumping yeah. them out, dude. Yeah, and companies like, geez, HPA's got to be just about done, bro. You would think. I still see them putting a little ad here or there, but. They still they sent me an email the other day, like, are you sure you don't want a membership? <laughs> are you sure? They got to be just about done. And FCGs and all those other companies, like, man, they can't be making really anything. It's got to be tough sledding for them. <coughs> or is there so many fucking cards out there that just there's fringe, like, hobbyists that just, like, will send, will keep those places going? I guess. I mean, I mean uh, GMA's been, <laughs> they've been still making cards, grading uh, cards forever. Touche. You know, those motherfuckers are still around. And I actually looked at it. But they're I'm like just, eight bucks, right? I'm not sure what their I prices say are. They're like fucking. Sounds right, though. Yeah. They're like 10 or eight bucks. I'm almost positive. Sounds right. Yeah. I could be wrong. I've never even looked into it, to be honest. Right. So. It's like the price of a, of a expensive One touch. Top, yeah. Expensive <laughs> top loader. Yeah, yeah. If somebody walked up to my table with G, with GMA cards, I would offer them raw prices. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be, I wouldn't give it a bump. I nope. just, I just wouldn't. HGA, any of those, any of those other companies, other than outside of the big three, I, I would look up CSG. Like if it's in the CSG slab, I'll look it up, and I would, I would honor the comp on that. Yeah. But everything, every other grading company, I would go raw. Yeah. I'd go raw. There's no way you could flip that and try to make any anything the and the play on those is to buy them for raw crack them and resub them to psa it can be yeah you know i mean i've i've i haven't heard i mean i've i haven't heard too many people bragging about that working out too well for them though yeah so and if it did they would be definitely fucking bragging mm-hmm. yeah that's true they'd be all over socials i just bought the stock of hga slabs and cracked and resub and yeah and at a point that would a uh, that was almost a play was to send to those cheaper companies for like a, a review, review almost I yeah. guess you know I wasn't something I would have done but like I could see somebody doing that I guess okay. especially a company like FCG who gives you that little report yeah yeah that's you know? pretty cool and they might see something you didn't see or catch something you didn't see or something you're mm-hmm. like oh shit yeah you know and they're I think eighteen bucks fourteen bucks card I want to say they are or fifteen I don't fucking know. Yeah, I haven't I haven't checked them in a long time. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's grading is is uh, it's gotten to points where PSA is just taken over. It, there's not much anybody else can do once they caught caught up. Once they hired enough people to catch up, now they have all those people. Psh, yeah, keep them busy, and that's it. Yeah. And they're keeping them busy, man. People are sending tons of cards, tons mm-hmm. of cards. Every time they get, get to the point to where they need another little influx, they just run another special. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Send out another little fucking $15, $20 special or a $15 fucking $12 special or something to all the Collectors Club members. Fuck, boom. They get you another fucking 10 million cards right there. Bam. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> let's, let's get us another little backlog. Yeah. Um, It would be nice, though, if there was like some buddy to keep them honest you know? yeah yeah well the the problem is 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 nobody wants to pay if it's not in psa nobody wants to pay up no nope. they they will not pay up and then that, i mean that's how comps are made the only way they're going to move and the only way they're going to make headway that way is if people pay up for them and they just don't you know and that's what i've always said if if anybody who wants to support these smaller companies ever wants their cards to be worth more than the only way that the best way is to go and buy more, go and buy them from other people, not to just keep grading more. Right. Right. You know? You'd have to, you have to go buy them and you have to create those comps, create those comps and bid up, you know, if they're so <laughs> great. Then how come you're not out there buying them? Right. And how come other people aren't bidding against you? You just think they're great because you have a bunch of them. And you want them to fucking sell. You want them to be valuable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's part of, I honestly, I think that's part of why PSA was so, like able to capture the market because people there was a lot of old heads that had big PSA cards in PS I mean big cards in PSA slabs and collections yeah. and shit so they're you know what I mean they're dead set that like this is what it's going to be and you know 
they're bidding and they're buying other cards. So they were keeping comps up and, yeah. you know, and that they, that's, I think how PSA became that over Beckett. Yeah. Cause yeah. Beckett was the one, you know, for a and long they just time. At, at first it was, it was that, that's how they did it was they just got their name on as many fucking slabs as they fucking possibly could. And now that, that they dominate the fucking market because there's so many of them. Yeah. And they run that shit. Yeah. But now they're so big that nobody else could ever catch up. They'd be running that shit, dog. There's no way anybody could ever catch up. Ever. Now. It's something. Well, I mean, me. No. No. Fuck, Maybe it'd be so something, hard to fucking catch up. Like actual number of graded cards. Something catastrophic would have to happen to PSA. Yeah, you exactly. know what I mean? It'd have, have to, to have like. An internal disaster. That a crazy, like a flood inside or like <laughs> <laughs> something like uncontrollable. like Or like a huge scandal. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And Nat Turner and like and in a P they're video, still so big, bro. They'd be the fucking. It's like any these gigantic breakers that have a scandal. They don't fucking slow them down, man. That's true. It's crazy, bro. That is true. I don't even know if that would fucking slow them down. <laughs> They'd have to get hit by a meteorite. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Just build another planet. <laughs> <laughs> planet PSA. Yeah, and you know what? Because I'm not a fan of the actual company, bro. But I mean, what else are you gonna do, bro? Are you going to be the one to take the fucking the heater for everybody else? Yeah. Yeah. No one's willing to do that for sure. Yeah. I'm not. No. Yeah. Fuck no. Nope. It's true. And I, like on like all said and done, I I like the Beckett slabs the best. I think they look the most professional. I think they look clean. I, I like the look of them. And I always have. You know, I always thought they were the best ones, but they just don't. They're, they've lost their grip. You know, they've lost their grip on everything. PSA swooped up and. Move. Yeah, and it's like I always say too. It's like I can see everybody having a favorite and fucking one kind of being worth the most. I just don't understand why everything can't be a little closer. Yeah, not even necessarily everything, but at least the top ones, like top three or four, just be pretty comparable with each other. Mm-hmm. That's I think a lot of people feel that way. I really do. You know, I hear it a lot. Actually, yeah. I hear it in socials and hear people talking about it in videos and stuff. That I don't know. You know, I just would like them to be more equal in value. You know, but. You can want all, whatever you want, yeah. but what what the hobby does and what people do are two different things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the only reason I send anything else is is to send to SGC, and it's mostly just kind of for because they come back so fast, bro. And it's stuff that I kind of do the little fucking problem in my head, and I'm like, yeah, it's barely worth fucking more as a PSA anyway in, in these particular cards, so I'll send it over there. Yeah. And it's kind of like, Almost just for fun, dude. Because grading yeah. is kind of fun. Yeah, grading is fun. So I'll send yeah. a few, a handful of fucking cards to PSA or to SGC once a month. Fucking eighteen dollars a pop, and fucking get them back in like two weeks, bro. And some cool shit that it doesn't matter because there's not a millions of them in all any fucking slabs. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So. You know what? I've never, I've never looked at SGC's pop report. Yeah. Ever. I don't think I've I looked think at it's it once. Weird and I think it's hard to fucking find, but yeah, I think that's why um, that guy doesn't include it in his reports that he does and shit that guy that prints in in uh he puts them in like a lot of the different groups that little report that he prints where uh, it's kind of like the gem rates fucking one but it's like the how many cards each company graded each week and blah 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 mm-hmm. their percentages of going up and down and it's a, there's a different person in gem rate that does that yeah he's like a personal he just does it all on his own i think oh really I've tagged you in it a couple times. He he puts it in like sports reconnaissance and a bunch of other little huh. groups. Jorge Nordlack is what his name is on there. Oh no shit! Yeah, I I f- kind of it's remember pretty, that it's now a that pretty you good, say pretty yeah. good in informa- informative little chart that he builds. But yeah, but SEC and Beckett are like they have weird pop reports. Yeah, Beckett, I've I've looked at theirs and it's fucking and they don't brutal. update them often enough and mm-hmm. yeah, that's brutal. Uh, yeah, well, we'll move on, bro. We'll move on. We'll see what happens um, with these pop counts because I mean they're gonna be they're gonna be sky high. Yeah, at a certain point, I mean that's kind of why you know I wouldn't even I wouldn't even really want to buy a, a Jordan rookie that wasn't like a PSA ten, bro. And no. even though there's so fucking many, dude, I don't know if that's a great investment. <laughs> you know, a ten maybe, but everything else they're they're just more and more accumulating still constantly and there's guys that have hundreds of them just waiting to sell yeah i'm sure I'm sure and even do. even a card like um and this isn't even a fucking 
close to as valuable as a card, but the card that I follow quite a bit is that Todd Helton bazooka card. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty rare card. Um, but the comps on that were pretty, pretty good. And there was a guy that must have been hoarding a bunch, and he listed like 10 of them on eBay the, the other day. Yeah. Like, all at once, bro. Yeah. And what the fuck did that do? Yeah, it crushed those values. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. So every, every time somebody fucking has a handful of them they want to get rid of, they need the cash or whatever, mm -hmm. boom, it's going to fuck everything up. Yeah. Next time a guy that has a thousand Jordans just wants to get rid of a hundred of them because he, cause he needs some cash, you know? Yeah. And then everything's fucked. Because there's guys out there that probably have a thousand of them, dude. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> there's a lot of them. Pass them out for fucking Christmas presents one year because they're sick of fucking dragging them around <laughs> and shit. It's like, can I get on your Christmas list, dog? <laughs> I'd like a Jordan. I'd like a Jordan rookie. So, I mean, I would like to have one, but I don't know if I would buy one as a as definitely not as a quick flip because that shit's fucking scary to me, bro. Yeah, no. If I had, a, I I would want a Jordan rookie just for me, just like a PC yeah. card. Yeah. Just because Jordan you, and was, it will always be worth something. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's gonna be worth nothing, but it, to to say it's gonna keep going or to go up from here is tough, man. It depends. It depends on the on the demand, I guess. Depends on the demand because yeah. like if the hobby does 10x, you know, a lot of people, especially new people, would want a Jordan rookie. So, it, it, you know, the demand can change, and it, they might be able to go up eventually, but yeah. it might take a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say never, but I wouldn't. No, like, would, yeah, there's things that could happen, I suppose. I wouldn't, like. I wouldn't bank on it. I wouldn't right. say it's a good investment. I wouldn't bank on it. it yeah. It's more of a gamble than yep. an investment, for yep. sure. For sure. Yeah. I wouldn't bank on it. The, 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 and this is this fucked up part about the Jordan rookie is like the best play on a Jordan rookie is to get a raw one and get it graded and then flip it. But there's so many fucking fakes. There's so many and good fakes. Mm -hmm. I saw a really good fake at the at the spring show a couple months back. It was a great fake. Yeah. But it was a fake. And there was somebody who, DC, he, he yeah. looked at it. He's like, nope. Immediately he knew because I mean he yeah. he's that's he has one, I th and if I think I think he might have a couple actually, but like he I'm knows sure. he knows what they what the fakes are and he he knows if anybody it's him, and he, I took it to him because a homie was gonna try to buy it and I was like Look, take it to David you know he'll know, and he went and checked it and he's like nope, and then th the deal didn't happen but like the raw to, to grade to flip that's the only move, but it's so if sketchy. you're able to get a hold of like some boxes or something right right. Know. Right, some, but even that, dude, the the part, the cost of a box, there's only so much. Fuck, yeah, so much, and then you can't even trust the BBC e wrapping on the motherfucker. Exactly. I was just so, about to say that too. So it's like technically, <laughs> right? It's a tough game to get raw Jordans for sure. Very tough, but that's the only real move on those right now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you get an auto. You know, Jordan Auto. Shit. Oh yeah, more rare kind of stuff. Fuck yeah, but like mm -hmm. the rookie's tough. There's it's a it's a base card. You know, there's millions of them. I'm sure out there. I'm sure there's for every one. There's probably five fakes too. Man, there's a lot. Yeah, and if you fucking selling that shit, just throw them away, man. Come on. <laughs> Even if you're selling them for like five bucks, yeah, just, just throw those fucking things away. Yeah, I still have that one. Yeah, or or at least get it out of circulation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I still have that one. I yeah. you popped it that HGA slab yeah. when you cracked it with your hands, and I put it, it put it in there and snapped it up. It's still in there. I meant to make a little label for it. And I just never got around to it. Just like in crayon, like Michael Jordan, yeah. <laughs> HGA custom, <laughs> HGA one should, of one. I should fucking send another Jordan and then get a custom label made for it and then put <laughs> that in there. Like yeah. switch it out. <laughs> That'd be dope. That'd be dope. But we'll move on, bro. We'll go to our next topic under the cardboard, um, which is the iCards show recap. So iCards had a show up in Denver this past weekend. Um, you and I both attended, um, had a great time. Um, what was How was the show for you, bro? Shit, it was cool. You know, like always, it's always good to see Mark and all the homies up there fucking kick back, hang out in the hallway and fucking... Just chill. I got to set up with the homeboy across from the homeboy Dave. Happy birthday to that homeboy. Happy birthday, David Bruins. But yeah, no, it was a good time. Good time. I, uh, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't really buy a ton. I picked up one card, I think, during the day there, and um, and uh, yeah, I had a chance to get a uh, Shavkat uh, tie dye prism uh, mezzanine level select card, but. 
Homie wanted a little bit much for it. I mean, there was a comp for about six, but like a comp. Right. And I was like, eh. It's closer to maybe a four or five hundred dollar card at best. I mean, it's it's not. It's just a number out of twenty five. And I mean, that's the thing with select is like it has the different levels. But mezzanine is like supposedly the highest level or whatever. But right. Once uh, once they're all numbered at twenty five, does that even matter? You know, yeah. what I mean? if they're tie dye tie dye mezzanine tie dye octagon side tie dye premier level whatever, they're all numbered at twenty five. But each one's supposed to be a little bit better. Right. But they're still right. all numbered out of 25. Right. And so the higher levels sell for a little more, but not as much, really, because mm-hmm. they're still kind of the same. Right. In the actual base set, the different levels are shorter printed and shorter printed. Right. And when so that's when they're sense. all the same exact number, yeah. So it's it's kind of one of those. It kind of takes away sn- the. Sneaky panini things. Takes away the rarity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People are like, they think that one's more rare because it's the mezzanine level. Right. Well, it's really not. Actually, you had the same exact chance of pulling that <laughs> as you did the fucking premier level. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's that to it too, and I think <laughs> once more people kind of catch on to that, those will go come down a little bit. Yeah. And then there's also they have like the mezzanine silver or the club le- or the well they call them uh, octagon side in in UFC silvers are SSP case hits or whatever. Oh really? So then there's that interpretation to where once you see oh well it's, it must be a case hit or blah 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 because it's octons and yeah it's just it gets confusing for people and select is fun partially because of that but it gets a little bit confusing right too. And right it, and it's kind of deceptive in a way oh yeah you know oh yeah you need like a degree in like accounting <laughs> to be able to figure out selects like little thing they got going With on the levels and all that yeah so <clears throat> but yeah um it was it was a good time I ended up passing on that, and uh, I picked up a Mantle Maze Killebrew uh, 68. Let's see. You got it? it. Right you got, here, got right the right show? Quick. It's a Tops Superstars. Oh. oh, bam. Picked that up from the birthday boy, actually. Pretty cool little deal. Might send that one off to SGC just for fun. It's got a uh, It's got a pretty bad corner, but I think it could get a floor. So nice. It could it could go to PSA too. The problem with PSA is I uh, don't have enough to send it for a bulk, so I'd have to pay a little more to send it to PSA. But yeah, now that's real cool. And vintage, I don't really mind in SGC. It's it's worth less, but it's not worth crazy less. It's not like thirty percent like, like yeah. ultra modern shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. yeah, that's cool. Man, I just realized that I've had these <laughs> on the board here. I had my name and your name on here. And they were switched. They flip flopped. Oh, so shit. like when you were talking, it's been on me, and I've been just sitting here oh. like, <laughs> <laughs> oops, oopsies. <laughs> I, uh, I saw you kind of look over and go. Oop. I was like, oh shit, oh fuck, oh well, uh, it's wrong. Oh you damn, got, it. you guys are lucky. You're even getting video this week. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Had little technical difficulties, but we got it figured out somewhat. Oh shit! <laughs> I couldn't get that camera to work. I was, about, I was about ready to spike it against the wall, dude. Sometimes you got a Gronk spike, shit. Sometimes you just got a Gronk spike. How was your show over there today or uh, that day? Um, it was good, dude. It was good. I had a good time. Uh, made some decent deals. Um, got some pickups. I'll do my little show and tell. Cool. Uh, let's see. I'll switch it on to Jeremy so that my camera's on. <laughs> uh, the first one, the non graded card. Picked up in a little trade with DC, um, this little Trevor Lawrence oh, nice. auto. Um, it's a legacy, and it is out of 99. I don't know if you oh, can see yeah. that. Um, but it's a pretty cool card. Um, thought it was a nice-looking little auto, so got that and a little bit of cash for a Jokic rookie. Sweet. Um, and my uh, my partner, Jorge, picked up this Zach Veen. Um, it's a PSA 9, and it's uh, the orange, so it's out of 25. It's the chrome. And um, it's a pretty cool card. Zach Veen's a, a real good prospect for the Rockies, and he's been first Bowman. <clears throat> yep, and he's been playing real strong this preseason and in the spring. So oh, hopefully yeah. that could make a couple of moves. Yeah, hopefully he's on the opening day roster. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd, that'd be cool. Be cool. Um, also picked up this uh, 2018 Ronald Acuna Sepia Refractor, and that's a uh, PSA 9 as well. Um, thought that was a cool card. It's a real... Real neat little card, and from he's been tearing up, tearing it up in uh, 
Venezuela? Is that where he plays in Venezuela, I think? Uh, I think so. I don't know. He'd been tearing it up over there over the, su- over the winter and stuff. So hopefully for a good comeback season for Mr. Acuna. World Baseball Classic starts tonight, I think. Oh, is it tonight? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Nice. Uh, Vladdy's not going to play. He got a little hurt knee, so he's not going to play. Oh, really? But I think everyone else. I don't think I've heard anyone else back out. Hmm. But nice. I've got to watch some of that. I lo- that shit's fun. Um, this one here is a 2018 Topps Transcendent Shohei Otani. Um, it's uh, out of 50, and it's a PSA 9 as well. Uh, that one was a pretty cool card. Um, Japan? Japan. It says Japan. I'm not sh- quite sure if it's a Japanese version or I'm, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Cool. But I thought it was dope. Transcendent. Chohei Otani, Japan. Hmm. Yeah. Must be, bro. Interesting. Yeah. I thought it was neat. You know, it's low numbered Otani rookie. So yeah. figured that was a good, that was I mean, a good pickup. There's pick no up. Chinese or a Japanese writing or anything on it. So Mm-mm. interesting. Freaking cool though. Yeah. That was, that was a cool one. Rookie too, hell yeah! Yeah, it's really cool. And I'm, it doesn't have the rookie card insignia on it yeah, though. It oh, it does! Yeah. Oh, oh, it yeah. does! I didn't see that. Yes, sir. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's a cool card, bro. Yeah, for sure. Um, I picked this this Joker up here. This one's a Donruss Donruss base, but it's got an in person auto on it, and it's just uh, PSA graded authentic. It doesn't have the grade of the card, but it's a cool card. Um, little you get that from ODC too. I did, yeah. Yeah. So we on the Raider rookie? Yep. Cool. And this last one is my favorite one. You were just talking about your Joker oh, Kaboom. Shit, uh, I was able to pick up this Joker Kaboom, and it's a BGS 9.5. And like you said, you know, this is the time to get it, and it hopefully it makes some moves. That's the same card, right? I think so. The, yeah. cr- the Crown Royal, Royal, I think. Yeah. For sure. He only has two Kabooms, and he? he has, I think the other one was a 20... 19 and I, I the one that looks more comic mm-hmm. comic-y. and I want to say that other one was absolute I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that's, this is the same one I got yeah yeah the 2021 yeah, 2020 2021 yeah noise yeah I'm probably gonna send mine off too yeah yeah for sure but those were the pickups um had a great time man had a lot of fun met a lot of new people um it was a fun show. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I don't know. Damn it. Now I'm going to have to double check mine. And send her in. <laughs> Get her graded up. Yeah, so on the way home, I fucking stopped at the uh, Iron Lion trade night. I oh, just uh, jumped dude. off the side of the highway. That was pretty dope. Actually, there was a hell of a time, man. I highly recommend checking that out. It was uh, a little more family friendly than Chicken Doms, but it, uh, that was fine. It was fine. It was super cool. They had a bunch <laughs> of uh, uh, pack war type stuff going on and giveaways, and uh, they probably gave away... I don't know, five hundred thousand dollars worth of shit, dude. It was it was pretty dope. Nice. And while I was there, I picked up a couple of cool things. Uh, we got the twenty fourteen Tops Platinum Mike Evans Black Refractor. I just I kind of last year or so kind of just really started kind of thinking highly of this guy. I started kind of realizing how great he actually is and the numbers he's putting up, and he's borderlining some all time great shit, bro. Yeah, he's actually putting up some really cool fucking. Uh, really good stats and numbers and shit. Yeah, that's a that's a cool card, man. That's beautiful. And then I picked these up, and I know I know a couple couple homies that are going to be jealous of these. <laughs> these are 2014 School Shop ABA Liga Nikola Jokic. Uh, I guess it's a first card, not necessarily rookie first card. It's a those are. I, PSA nine and a PSA ten there. It's Serbian cards, huh? Yeah, so those are in a Serbian u- uniform. Uh, yeah, pretty dope, bro. Uh, I know they're super rare. Uh, pop count total on between the nines and tens was uh, fifty something. I want to say I think it's forty six on the nine and eight on the ten. Who I want to say so. That's there's dope. only there's only eight of these tens and. So knowing a lot of Joker, Joker, I can never say his goddamn name. That <laughs> Jokic card fans, I might have to fight some people for that one. That's dope card, dude. Those but came up on those at trade night, bro. Uh, definitely would like to hit that trade night up again too. That was pretty fucking sweet. Yeah, I think I showed you those the other day. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're sick, dude. They're pretty sick, pretty sick. Nice. 
Nice. Oh, one thing I want to say, though, you're going to have some $500 cards. You might want to put them in protective plastic. <laughs> <laughs> I took them out just to show them on screen just because I think they show up better, but they're going right back. You might want to get some plastic on them. <laughs> and then another little mail day just oh, for shoot. the hell of it. I got this. Uh, I got this in the mail today, yesterday, today. Uh, Patty the Pimblet autograph. Oh, so nice. He doesn't have any autographs in any uh, sets or anything yet. And I don't know if he will. He's kind of been being uh, a turd about signing. He doesn't like to sign, partially because I think uh, the guy that had him sign all of these turned around and sold a bunch of them, and I think it might have butthurt him. <laughs> There's only so many of these out there, and they're all on this card. And one guy I think had him sign like maybe a hundred of them, so a hundred of them or so. I don't know exactly how many there are, but they're all in different ink. Mine has silver ink. There's some with gold ink. There's some with orange ink. Whatever. But mine has about the cleanest signature I saw. I didn't get the autograph graded. I probably should have because so many of the other ones I saw with really, really shitty autograph grades, and that would have made it stand out a little more. It's only a PSA 9, but um, most people either got it at graded as card and auto grade or just as authentic. So I have to double check, but it might be pop one, or I know it's definitely low pop because of the way that, with a dual service, kind of like how you found with yours, right? Like, you know, pop one, you know. Um, but I'm almost regretting not having that. It's a little tiny bit streaky, but it's, it's pretty darn clean. But a lot of the autos That's that sweet, I saw dude. get graded were like six, seven, eights. So right. That's dope. It's actually pretty cool. It's pretty damn cool card, dude. Hell yeah. So I was a tiniest bit worried they wouldn't authenticate it, even though I knew it was legit. It's just they're. He doesn't really have too much to compare it to, but mm-hmm. so anyway, pretty sweet. One more, one more quick little flash there. Let's see. Let me zoom in. There you go. Bam. Booyah. So anyway, that was my mail day. Yeah, that Patty Pimblet's sick. He's one of my favorites, dude. I, I really like him. He's one of yeah. the guys that I, I'm, him and Izzy are like my two favorite right now. Yeah, I'm kind of rooting for him, so. Yeah, we'll see. for sure. But, um. Yeah, dude. iCard show was a great success. It was a lot of fun. Mark from iCards. Um, iCards USA is his website. Um, go check it out if you're ever wanting to get a table or get any information. Um, check him out. He's an awesome dude. Puts He's on a good show. iCards with a K. iCards with a K. He was, we did that video in Denver, and he was, yeah. he was talking. I was giving a quick interview, and he goes, iCards with a K. I was like, dude. I, I finally asked him why, why iCards with a K. Why is that? Because his wife, wife's name is Monica with a K. Oh, nice. I K A. Nice. I was like, oh, cool. Family Sm- man. He's smart, a family man. Smart move, dude. Mark. Smart move. Yeah, his wife's awesome too. She knows. She knows her sports, dude. She. Oh, I'll see her and she'll like question me. So what's going on with the Broncos? Like, <laughs> who's going to be their best wide receiver? Who's and like she'll she knows her sports, dude. Oh, yeah. So. Mark also suggested we need to get her on the pod. He's like, you need to get her on the podcast. He's like, she she knows more sports than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, great guy. Yeah, okay, anytime. Um, great family, great people. Mark is dope, dude. He has his mom will be watching his table. You go over there to his table, and his mom Duke's is chilling. His wife's chilling. Like, yeah, it's awesome. It's a family affair over there at iCards. Uh, but yeah, definitely check them out, mm-hmm. and uh, they put on a hell of a show. But I think it's time for us to do a little shot, my brother. I've been staring at it. You've been staring? You ready to do this? Clink. Clank, clank. (coughs) (laughs) (laughs) Woo-wee. And I look like a little bitch. That's all good. (coughs) Went down the wrong wrong pipe. (laughs) You piped it? <clears throat> I inhaled it a little bit. Whoo. <clears throat> Who we word. That's good though. Awesome. So now that we did our shot, we're gonna hear hear a little bit from uh our sponsor, uh, Mr. John Scanlon from Denver Card Show. Word. This podcast is brought to you by Denver Card Shows. Come find your grail and chill with some of the dopest people in the hobby. For more information, check out denvercardshows.com. Hitting those 16 switches. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> With everybody saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. Denver Card Shows. 
Um, go check them out, denvercardshow.com. There's going to be another two-dayer coming up in April. Um, we just got off of the last two-dayer. It was a great time. We had a spectacular time. So if you're in the Denver area or if you're close, come on down and check it out. Look at And we, we will be there. More than likely, we will be up in that motherfucker somewhere. If we don't have tables, we'll be walking around with looking for cards. But we usually have tables, though. You know it. But uh, you ready to jump into the wax element, my brother? Yep. Ooh. I've been fucking up on the on the the buttons and everything. I'm just like I'm slacking, bro. You gotta practice, practice. <laughs> I think I got that on the board. Do we have that on the board? Oh yeah, we do. We're talking about practice, man. Practice. We're talking about practice, man. I gotta practice. I gotta get on my game. <laughs> Ellen Iverson said so. But uh, the first topic under the wax element this week is about 2022 Bowman's Best Baseball. That's going to be coming out on 3-8, which is tomorrow. So this will be dropping tomorrow. So when you're hearing this, it will be dropping. So um, Shit's been dropped. <laughs> 2020, 20, 2022 Bowman's Best. Um, the master hobby boxes, they kind of come in a weird configuration compared to other boxes. They have like a big box that has like smaller boxes that contain the packs. Um, each mini box has two, I think, two six card packs. And um, each master hobby box has four autos. And they go from like anywhere from like 330 to 390, somewhere in there. That was the prices I was finding on the pre sale stuff. Um, what are your thoughts about Bowman's Best, bro? Should I actually dig uh, Bowman's Best and Top's Finest myself? It's like. Um it's like Chrome Plus almost, or you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like Chrome without all the fucking, all the uh, fucking crap, right? You know, all right. The, there's a little less parallels and shit. There's like it's way smaller set, it's like a smaller set. Yeah. It's uh, it don't have all the fucking offshoots like a fucking '80s sitcom and shit. <laughs> uh, oh shit! Yeah. A different world. Yeah. Coming off of Cosby. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's funny. That's so raven. That's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit. It, 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 but for real, like, I'm sick of that shit with Chrome already, bro. It's kind yeah. of fucking it up for me, bro. It's yeah. like. Chrome Sonic. Know. Chrome Cosmic. Chrome fucking pubes. Fucking Chrome, chrome everything. Chrome Pollard. Chrome Sapphire. Mm-hmm. Chrome fucking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're going they're going way deep on that shit. Yeah. But uh yeah, I like Bowman's best too, dude. I actually do. I think they're aesthetically nice too. I think yeah. they're, they're good looking cards. They usually have a nice design. I feel like they're just I mean, I know they're both chrome, but I feel like they're a tiny bit better quality too. Mm-hmm. The Bowman's best and the top's fine top's finest and Bowman's best are kind of the same. Like mm-hmm. I feel like they just are they just look cleaner. Like they just I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and you can get prospect stuff in them because they are Bowman, too. They have a, a prospect checklist as well. So, like, they kind of coincide with their Bowman counterparts. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's mm-hmm. why they tried to make that Wander rookie weird last Right, year. that's right. Damn, I forgot about that. But it didn't have the rookie card insignia or some shit. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's losing their minds about it. But my phone's over here buzzing. I do have it on silent, but it's like, meh, <laughs> meh. Um, but yeah, Bowman's best coming out. Um, I don't know. I bought a couple of uh, packs at uh, John Sports Cards and Collectibles in Springs. Did you um, last year when they came out? And I pulled a couple of autos, but they were no one big really. Uh, but I they were nice cards. I got a couple of real nice refractors of some decent rookies. You know, um, Kirillov and I want to say Ryan Mount Castle. I had I pulled a couple of decent little refractors out of them. Um, they don't get the hobby love though. You know, they don't get the, yeah. they don't get the price love. Um, do you think that they could somehow be make a move? Do you think people are? Gonna I think so because I've heard other people talking about them, bro, and how kind of in a, in a good way, like, uh, and the pop counts are better for sure. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. I'd imagine they were a lot less. Yeah, and see, and I could see a rookie from a, a, a base rookie, or even just a refractor or something from something like this. Having more of a premium, obviously, than just the regular Chrome, I I would think. But I mean, I, it probably is the other way around for now. Probably, yeah, I would say so. 
from what I've seen, anyway, yeah. looking up comps on I, cars. I would and stuff. rather have if I was gonna have a base, I would rather have that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would too. Yeah, I so, would too. It's like a little more. There has to. They have to print this a little less. I would. I would have think. To. Yeah. Quite a bit less, probably. Because mm-hmm. they don't have retail in them at all yeah. either. Too, it's just hobby stuff only. Yeah. Yeah. So you would think that they would be quite a bit less yeah. print. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. Check it out. Um, Bowman's best dropping tomorrow, which is today to y'all. If you're listening, um, go get you some. Yeah. Go get you some. Um, but that moves us on to our next topic under the wax is uh, 2022 immaculate football. Um, it's immaculate collection. You know, I, Rarely hear people even say the collection part. I just always hear right. immaculate. Yeah. But it's technically immaculate collection. You're right. Um, that also comes out tomorrow, 3-8. Um, those guys are six cards per box. It's just a one six-card pack. And um, it looks like the there's five autos and or relics in, in each one. So, I mean, you could – it's not specific. Like, you get two autos and three hmm. relics. or It's just kind of like and or. So some boxes you might get more autos than others. I think it's three two generally, but mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know they always have to cover themselves because some boxes get f- fucked up. I'm sure. But um, I don't know, dude. What are your thoughts about immaculate collection? I mean, it's it's nice, but it's kind of confusing. I guess it's uh, it's uh, it's one of those. You know, I'm always griping about the the too many synonyms of perfect. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Kind of sets and it, people confuse it. I think for like flawless a mm. little bit or like maybe not. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. that. Like I was saying earlier about the other other shit. It's like it's a little sneaky. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a little, a little deceptive almost, or a little little like they're kind of hoping you don't know the difference. You know, <laughs> like you think they look too much like those other. I do like. I, uh, Flawless and NT and all those higher end. I think all of those sets look too much like each other, and year after year they all always look too much like they did previously. Right, they don't change. Yeah, they really don't. It's just the white card with the you know the same design type of patches and and for like I said, for them all being synonyms of flawless, they don't grade worth a fuck. Right, that's for sure. <laughs> They're definitely not flawless. Right, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean they're nice and they're cool. They're usually dope ass looking cards. I'm not saying they're not sick looking, but mm-hmm. I don't know. They're a little little boring after a while because of that. They always look kind of the same. Yeah, and you would think the higher end stuff that you'd you know you'd try to like push that design yeah, envelope. Somehow. Yeah, yeah, somehow, like you know back in the day, like NT was way different looking. They they looked complete. They had color to them. They had a lot of different stuff. Mm-hmm. They like kind of had like a gold kind of tint on them. Um, when they first like the first year that when they came out, they they looked completely different than what they do now. And they looks like they tried to make them special, you know. And now it's just the white. And I don't I don't get that. They're like white. Well, actually, NT pretty much has a border, I guess. But the a lot of them are like kind of borderless or like very little border, and just. They're they're nice. They have mostly picture, and they concentrate on the picture. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's true. But I don't know. I'd like something different. Yeah. Something, and even prism, dude. Speaking of prism, that's that's yeah. the, that's the next one. That's number three here under the wax. Twenty twenty two prism drops on the fifteenth. Mm-hmm. Um, prism football, um, dude. I and I saw the the design, and it's just 2020, 2021, 2022 All look exactly the A same. A few more little stripes and angles. Mm-hmm. Just like instead of this in coming in like that now, now it goes like this. Mm-hmm. And they were, I was like, dude, you, you guys aren't even fucking trying anymore. Yeah. Like the f- older Prism sets, I, w- I want to say it was like 2015, 2016 Prism, something like that. They were, they were dope. They looked really good. Um, yeah. Whatever year um, Embiid's rookie year was, Embiid's yeah. rookie year, I want to say it might have been 14. I, I can't I think remember. That's 14. Yeah. But yeah, pretty much every year it's almost like they just try to morph it just a tiny bit into the next year's set. Like they're just like, okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker, you. And just angle it just a little more like, okay. Cool. <laughs> oh, man. 
but I, like I was saying, dude, I'm kind of. I mean, I mean, we're still talking about the other one, but like I'm kind of over Prism. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm not the biggest Prism fan. I've never, I've never have been really. Yeah, I've always been more of a select person. I like select a lot better. Um, I, I also like Mosaic, like the last year's Mosaic. This last year, dude, those were, they came out fucking nice. They looked yeah. sweet. Um, I'm starting to like move over to Mosaic a little bit too. I'm, I'm starting to really like that shit. They look pretty good. Yeah. I like Mosaic too, but yeah, at a certain point, it's going to probably be fucking the same. It's going to be hard to tell when you're from the next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's Panini. They only got, they got like two years left. You know, we'll see if they, you know, continue doing the same shit for the next couple of years. Yeah, and they don't have a ton of motivation to do that. So yeah, they're short. They, was it short timers when yeah. like the lame, guys get ready lame to retire? Coaches, <laughs> lame duck. Panini's on their lame duck term. Yeah, for real. They're like, yeah, fuck it. Just, like, turn it that way. Yeah. Uh, immaculate? Eh, just make them white. Yeah. Yeah, have a nice patch in it. Uh, but the Prism, they come out on the 15th. Uh, Prism Football 2022. Um, that is Kenny Pickett's year and Brock Purdy's year. You have to announce that when they come out because they're so behind. Who knows? I mean, the draft's yeah, about man. ready to happen, and 2023 class is about ready to come out. I mean, it feels like fucking, well, they, it was. They were so far behind with the other one that we were just ripping the old fucking prism fucking a mo- couple months ago. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Yeah, it really wasn't. It seems like they're tr- catching up a little bit, though. I mean, yeah. last, last year's football prison came out in, like, the middle of the summer, I want to say. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. So now coming out in March, that's better. You know, that's better. It used to come out in, like, November. I want to say, like, October, November time. Like, it was in the middle, middle to late season. Yeah, I don't know. I know a lot of people are still pretty excited for it, for it, you know. It's just I think they're just still excited just from the the overhype from before though, you know, it's mm-hmm. the prisism. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, got to get you that prism. Yeah. And who knows, I'll probably buy a hanger or two or fucking Oh, I always, you know, yeah. But. Always do, you know, a little bit. Last year I bought quite a bit of football. I w- walked into a couple of restocks at Walmart and was able to get some, but yeah. Um, yeah, um, they, looks like they're the same kind of, uh, um, configuration, like per hobby box that they've always been two autos, uh, 10 number cards, 24 rookies. Um, the pre-sales I saw on eBay, dude, they were like 700 bucks, which is way down compared to what they've been past years. Yeah. Um, do you think that's because of the class or do you think that's because people are, aren't ponying up the dough to pay for it anymore? Uh, could be both, but I think it's mostly the latter. But I don't, I don't know. Uh, everything is going down a little bit. I've noticed. The only thing that went up was retail. Yeah. You know, but tch, fuck. Funny thing is, as much retail as they sell, they probably fucking by raising the retail five and dropping this four hundred, they probably still make more <laughs> they money. Probably do. <laughs> <laughs> they probably do, That's bro. Funny, yeah. That's we're making it up over there. So yeah, we're we're, we're killing it on retail side. So we'll yeah. drop our hobby boxes down. Yeah, that's true. Might be. <laughs> and that was just eBay pre-sales. I mean, I'm sure, sure. they're probably going to be more, but that's just what I was able to come up with. I, mm-hmm. I wanted to check that. It's hard to know because they've been so, so different recently. You know, the prices have been coming down on wax, so it's hard to know exactly what they're going to be at. But at 700 a box, I don't know, man. If it If it hovers around there, that's starting to become a place where I'd be like, I might think about getting a box <laughs> if they get to down to 500 i might get a hobby box of prison football yeah yeah try it out see if i can pull a gold yeah you know yeah that'd be cool a box, you get at least one good something gold or something yeah a gold or a, a case hit oh speaking of case hits they have fucking like four of them they have the <clears throat> the color blast of course and then the manga those ones where they're like kind of cartoonish drawn looking fucking things and they have the instant impact and the stained glass sp inserts um dude four per set four yeah, per set you're getting a little carried away with that shit bro and the you're only getting, two a that i carried away with that right a little bit the only two that i even like are the color blast and the stained glass is it stained glass or is it glass stained glass oh, okay that's... i think the mosaic was glass yeah that absolute absolute you're right yep yep yep. it's absolute 
and those are cool. They're, yeah. they're actually kind of special because they're yeah. glass, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, SSSPs there. A lot of SSSSSSSSPs and prisonism. I still think, hopefully, they don't fuck up the color blast because those are still pretty, pretty rare. And I think that, um, as far as I've been able to tell, they are about as rare of a case as it gets. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. A lot of the other stuff they call them case hits or SSPs, and there's potential for a couple of them in a case. Sometimes get three of them in a case. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the the trifecta case hit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and even out of you know, you're probably gonna get well, almost one of each of those. Out yeah. Of the case anyway, so every other box is gonna have some case hit type of fucking card in it. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, see, five hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be more comfortable with four, but yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Is the fucking sheen come off a of prism a little bit? You think? Uh, for me, it has. I don't know for how many other people because I know there. I already see a bunch of people saying, "Oh, I can't wait for the prism." Yeah, can't wait for that prism. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm just a hater. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's more people that are excited about that Tom Brady fucking baseball autograph that aren't, and I'm on the I'm on the fucking hater side of that too. So that's true. I, I've heard some people already. Dude, a guy at work came up to me talking about. It. He said, "Hey, do you yeah. Tom Brady's gonna have a card?" And I was like, "Yes." There's some people pretty stoked about that shit. So. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, we'll see. To each their own. Yeah, for sure. And you know, people like what they like, so yeah, can't. Really hate on that. So are the uh, stained glass in Prism, are they, like, actually, like, clear? I don't think so. No. No. No, they're, like, they're kind of, like, uh, they're off, awfully similar to the mosaic stained glass, honestly. I was going to say, yeah. mosaic has a stained glass just regular mm-hmm. insert, right? Mm-hmm. There's a, I don't think there's a special. See, you know, why? 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 Yeah. Why confuse everybody, bro? <laughs> Come on, Panini. And they have, I mean, they have and the people of fucking stained glass out of mosaic. You're like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's like, bruh, calm down. It's worth like twenty five cents. It's like, oh, I pulled a stained glass. <laughs> That's a little loud. Sure, <laughs> wing. <laughs> uh, shit, but yeah, that's true. They, they just, it's just confusing. It's just confusing. And it, I don't know if it's, I, it almost, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's fucking intentional, bro. It's like they're intentionally fucking confusing people just so they fucking, you know. It, and it's like deception, but like they're just trying to play dumb, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, hmm. oh, I, we didn't even really think of that. Not us. Hmm. Oh, oh, that's I, weird. Oh, it, it's not a, it's not an SP though in this one, but who knows? Yep. <laughs> Why are some golds numbered out of 20, and some out of 50, some out of 5, and some out of 10? Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> They're all gold, though, right? They're all special. It's still special, right? It's precision. Precision. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's that's all I got for the wax, bro. Do you, uh, you want to move on to a little sports? Yeah, but first. Oh, shit. Can we get a motherfucking moment of silence for this small chronic break? Finish up this fucking pinner from the other day. <laughs> Is that the same one? Mm. Nice. If you don't know what pinner means, Google that shit. <laughs> Do you think it'll say, <coughs> think it'll say in, pin, in Google what a pinner is? I don't know. I bet you it does. Urban Dictionary. Yeah, it has to, bro. Now that you say that, as soon as you said, as soon as I said it, I was like, hmm, I don't even know. I wonder if it'd say. Well, you see, a pinner is. <laughs> I had a cat named Pinner. Did you really? I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe. Oh, yeah, Urban Dictionary. There we go. Yep. Ur- Urban, Urban Dictionary, Dictionary, baby. Coming through. <laughs> It always comes through. A small <coughs> marijuana cigarette rolled <laughs> tightly. <laughs> rolled tightly? Yep. That's funny. 
and lacking in marijuana content. <laughs> Usually sells cheap on the underground market. <laughs> more money, more money, more money. <laughs> Wrapped tightly. <laughs> That's the part that got me. Oh, shit. That's hilarious. <laughs> Urban Dictionary always comes through. Always. Anything I hear, and I hear something like that, and if I Google it, it'll it'll pop up. Dude, you know, well, I'll tell you after the pod. That's something that came, <coughs> something that came up in Urban Dictionary that you'll find, oh, hila- shit. You'll find hilarious. Oh, something about Pablo? Something about Pablo. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh we're gonna bust up some sports. Um the first topic under the sports element this week is about Derek Carr, bro. He signed with the Saints. Um looks like he got a four year hundred and fifty million dollar contract with uh with the New Orleans Saints. Um do do you in your opinion, just just what Jeremy thinks, is Derek Carr a top 15 QB in the NFL? <clears throat> I don't know. He's really fucking close, bro. I think he's like right at about 15. Yeah. Like it, I was like, when you, when I first saw that, I was like, yeah, he's top 15. He's got to be. And then I started looking. And I was like, well, can't put him above him. Can't put him above him. Can't put him, <laughs> him. Can't put him above him, 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 or him, or him, or him, or him, or him. <laughs> I was like, fuck. <laughs> He might be right at 15. He's right at about 15, 16 he's the, for me, bro. He's yeah. pretty fucking close to it. I think he can be a top 10 quarterback. but Yeah. There's been some seasons where he's been that. And seasons, I think he's a yeah. solid starting quarterback. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think but, he's gotten a shitty deal over there in yeah. Raider land, you know. Yeah. He's had some pretty fucking shitty coaches and <coughs> some weird offenses. And, like, Gruden came in and then got rid of everyone, traded away Amari Cooper, traded Traded away Khalil Mack, like, and then and then he said like the N word or something, <laughs> or whatever mil- he did. I a, don't know a million times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was out of there, and now he has Josh yeah. McDaniels as his coach, and it's like, dude, he can't catch a break. Mm. So um, I don't know. We'll see. Do you think he'll be all right over there in the Saints? Do you think? I think so. I mean, I think they're uh, th- as long as they can get some consistency with their coaching, and I mean, they're gonna have to give it a shot. They're yeah. gonna have to give it a couple years. They're gonna have to fucking uh, tweak, t- tweak everything and keep fucking with everything all the time. Especially when you get one of these these new are uh, one of these veterans over, bro. It takes at least a couple years, I think, dude. Yeah, yeah. We're kind of struggling with that here in Denver too. Like we got Ross, and it was rough. So I, I think you got to wait two years before you, you can even make any sort of judgment. On yeah, it, you can't really expect a lot the first year. I yeah. mean, it's it's happened and it's been successful for some yeah. guys, but those guys were exceptional, like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, you and know, they, and they just fit perfectly where they fucking went, right? And they're they're just so good that it doesn't matter. They just transcend that, and they're able yeah. to take their team to thirteen wins immediately. Yeah, guys that uh, people will come to play with you too. Mm-hmm. Hundred so, percent. Yeah, I don't think anybody's chasing Derek Carr per se. Devonte Adams, that <laughs> he might, but. I, I don't know. I don't think yeah. so. He got paid a lot of money to be there in Oak or yeah. at Las Vegas, so yeah. he'll be there. But yeah, no one's chasing down Derek Carr. They're like, oh, I can't wait to go play with him. Yeah, he's good. You know, he's good. And I kind of like the move. I, I I'm a Saints fan. I like the Saints a lot, so it's going to help them improve. I think over their QB situation from last year is pretty fucking rough. So um, we'll see. We'll see if Derek Carr um, help makes an improvement there. Like what? What are the Raiders gonna do now? Do you what? Um, fuck. Who cares? No, <laughs> <laughs> you think they're gonna be chasing? A-A-Ron. Um, I don't know. He's already talking to the Jets. I think they said, huh? The Jets. Oh, yeah, that's right. That I heard that today. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, yeah. If Aaron Rodgers goes to the Jets, do you think that makes him a contender? I. <laughs> I don't know. I think they can make the playoffs, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's going to be tough. He's better than anything they've had. They're, they're just a losing organization, though, dude. They're just a fucking they're just a shitty <laughs> fucking team, bro. 
I mean, they're not a horrible team. They're just a shitty organization. Dude. Yeah, they they've can't. been. I mean, it's hard to argue against that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I've always, I mean, wanted them to do better than they've done. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm a fan, or I wouldn't say I wanted them to do good, but I, I hate seeing a team be consistently shitty. Yeah, I do too. It sucks. Even the Raiders, like, I don't ever want them to be good. I don't want to be consistently shitty either. Like, that sucks for football. That sucks for rivalries. That sucks for, you know. Yeah, that's true. It does. And especially, I mean, you. it's hard to hate a team that you beat the shit out of every year. Yeah. Yeah. And the Broncos are fucking kind of becoming that team, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to put this in the pod for Tony. Say another motherfucking word and this shit is over. <laughs> That's for you, Milestone. Oh, yeah, that shirt was dope. <laughs> the first time I met him, he was wearing that shirt. He oh, was he was set up at the Denver Card Show, and he was on the far back wall. And I made it all the way through, and I was looking at his stuff, and I saw I looked up, and I saw the shirt, and I was like, dude, that's the coolest shirt. That, that's what made me meet him was his shirt. I was like, dude, that's a cool shirt. And he's like, oh, thanks, man. He's like, you're the first person to notice what it was. Yeah. I was like, oh, are you serious? Yeah. It's like, Pinky's the man. Yeah. And it was Pinky's record in tapes. It was a dope t shirt. Yeah. But I told him, I was like, I got to throw that in, dude. It's on the board. It's like, I haven't had a chance to play it yet. But yeah. I had to do it. We'll do Sick. it again. We'll do it again. Say another <laughs> motherfucking word, and this shit is over. The way he stomps when he's talking. <laughs> <laughs> so full He's shaking bro. his head. <laughs> he does that little spin. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking twists around. <laughs> oh, man. And that, that was a tough one to sample because he drops like 40 N words in there. <laughs> so I had to like weed through them. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, dude. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the Saints. We'll see what happens with the Jets and A.A. Ron if he ends up going to the Jets. Um, I don't know. NFL free agency is like right around the corner. So there's going to be some shit heating up and quarterbacks yeah. move in a lot of different stuff. So is keep the combine already going. It was this last weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So they're on the, I think free agency is on the 15th. I think it starts some, some like that somewhere around there. And a lot of shit's going to fly this year. I think there's going to be QBs move in. There's going to be a lot yeah. of shit. So it'll be pretty hot. Yeah, there's a lot of decent quarterbacks that just, um, you know, if they're not great and they don't win the Super Bowl right away, they're trash. <laughs> and they're not, you know what they're I mean? They're not, yeah. And so the fucking team moves on, they get rid of them, or they fucking trade them, or fucking whatever. And there's a lot of guys out there that I think can do fucking well if they end up in the right situation. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think a change of scenery cha- helps a lot for a lot of different yeah, quarterbacks. Sometimes. Yeah, and it's either put up or shut up kind of moment. You know? mm-hmm. It's kind of like your last shot or something. You know, it's like you have another chance. That's that's gonna be it. Yep. See what you can do over here. You've got a yeah. new coaching staff, and I think that's kind of how what, where Russ is too. You know, it's like if you if he comes out and lays an egg next year, it's gonna be tough for him, dude. No. It's going to be Russ, real tough. Russ is amazing. I hope so. I'm praying. Oh, uh, fuck. I'm praying. Me too. Yeah. We'll see. I don't really pray, but I got my fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really pray either. <laughs> Not going to lie. Not going to lie. Um, speaking of praying, <laughs> that'll move us toward next topic. Um, John Morant <laughs> needs to put those hands together. Um, you need Jesus, dude. He <laughs> came to Denver. Um, they played the Nuggets on Friday night. Nuggets whooped their ass, and then <laughs> he, and he went and celebrated. <laughs> 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 Fucking idiot! Uh. He went out to good old Shotgun Willie's, dude. The, the infamous Shotgun Willie's, and was flashing a gun and. Put, posting it on IG at like 3 in the morning. I'm fucking my cards up, dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you know we're trying to pump and dump here. Damn it. Son of a bitch, jaw. Not shotguns. <laughs> Don't go to shotguns anywhere. Uh, Matt Prater got into a little bit of trouble over at shotguns. I, there's been like multiple like famous people getting in trouble at shotguns. I think even like <laughs> politicians. Like it, it, that place is just, it's got like yeah. a... Upside down cross hanging from the door <laughs> in that motherfucker. Um, but yeah, Jaw got into some shit. 
And, like, a, a bunch of other stuff has been kind of coming out, too. Like, he got into a fight with some 17-year-old kid playing basketball and, like, ended up punching him or something and then pulled a gun out on him. Um, I heard another story about um, they were playing, I can't remember, I think it was the Clippers, or they are playing somebody else, and him and his boys were, like, getting in beef with people. And then after the game, they were, like, it was the Clippers. They were, like, putting their laser beams off their guns at their fucking bus, dude. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You think you're Suge Knight? Like, what fuck the fuck it. is going on? Fucking wannabe, uh. And he's not, he didn't even grow up like that. Like, he yeah. didn't even grow up, like, gang banging and doing any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Fucking Clarence, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts about Jaw, dude? I don't know, man. I just, sometimes I just don't get it, bro. Like, why? Especially because he didn't even really come from that, obviously. Like, what the fuck? Right. Man? All right, dude, and I weird man. And if if it had just been the gun waving, yeah, that's fucking dumb and it's it's stupid. But it's not the worst thing in the entire world, you know. It's not. But with that, with all the other shit that's coming out, it's like, oh my god, like he's wilding. The team just like straight up suspended him. Hmm. And like, like it's like indefinite. We don't know when he's coming back. So it's like, you're blowing it, dude. You're, you're dropping the bag. There's a bag of cash waiting for you over here, and you're just, like, wiling for no reason. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and then they said even the uh, Colorado police are going to investigate him because of uh, gun laws and shit, you know. Can't fucking have, have you can't. Yeah, you can open carry, but you can't fucking flash a gun. And <laughs> 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 I think what they're trying to get him for was uh, possession of a gun while intoxicated. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely against the law. Yeah, yeah, you definitely can't do that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> dude. When I worked at the pawn shop, I had people come in faded, <laughs> faded, bro, <laughs> trying to buy a gun. Yeah. I'm like, listen, man. I could smell you from across the fucking counter here, bro. Like, don't. I mean, I I can get in trouble. I could lose our license. Like, dude, can't do it. Come back tomorrow. Yeah. Just come back tomorrow when you're not when you're not fucked up. Yeah. It was ridiculous. So I mean, there's dumb shit <laughs> happens all the time for you know with this kind of stuff. Look at that. But yeah, the Glendale Police, Glendale PD here in Denver, they're going to be on it. That's real close to the Hobby Source. Like, the Hobby Source isn't yeah. far from Shotguns. Have uh, you been there? I've never been there, no. Me neither. No. I went to, there was a Hooters right down the street. That's as close as I've been. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to drive by it a lot. My brother lived kind of downtown. So, where I used to live to get there on the back roads is going through and like up Colorado and right by Shotguns. But yeah, yeah. I've driven past it a million times. But yeah. Never been there. And I've heard they have good lunch. <laughs> they got some good wings. That's what I heard. I heard they have good lunch, dude. Seriously. Like a lot of people used to go there. <coughs> you know, I lunch. just went for the wings. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it that fucking went to the strip club for the wings during COVID from the bubble? And got in trouble. Oh, fuck. Who was that? He went to a doctor's appointment and stopped to that strip club. And he said, <laughs> I just was getting the wings. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody knows I love wings. Oh man, I can't remember it was who somebody that was. From the NBA, bro. No, I do remember he, that. He left the bubble to uh-huh. go to a doctor's appointment and then stopped for lunch on the way. <laughs> and he had to be like quarantined for like 14 <laughs> days. So he couldn't come back into the bubble. I do remember that. God, I can't remember who it was I don't though. Who it was either? But I wa- it was some fairly. It was known. somebody decently mm-hmm. famous. Yeah, ball player. I, I, I'm, I don't know why I keep wanting to say it's Donovan Mitchell. I don't. I don't think I don't it was him. Think so, yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows I like the wings over there. Shit, what you, I don't want you guys fucking. What you about. What you mean? <laughs> what you mean? The bubble. <laughs> That's shit. I didn't think the bubble included wings. It was like wings. ten o'clock. They didn't even have their titties out yet. <laughs> their titties were still holstered, but my gun was <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Oh my god, dude! Shotgun strikes again. Fucking dumbass. Bro. <laughs> Oh man, and like you said, like the card values, man. Card values are gonna tank. They're gonna tank. Yeah, I mean, you know, they'll come back as soon as he comes back and starts balling out again. He'll be fine. But 
Yeah. You think he, he, he can't do anything that bad. It's stupid and it's dumb and, you know, he's in the news and he's suspended and it's going to fuck his team and everybody's going to fucking be mad. His teammates going to be pissed and all the analysts are pissed and fucking yeah. judging him and shit. And uh, as soon as he gets back on the court and starts fucking balling out, he'll be fine. His yeah. cars will be fine, I think. I think so, too. I think so, too. You know, no, he, if he actually shot the gun or right. he, you know what I mean, then. It, I guess it also depends on, like, if he gets charges, too. Well, yeah, I, even if it's just charges just for the uh, possession while intoxicated or whatever. If he gets charges for fucking with that kid, that might be different. That might be different. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And all and this all the stuff is alleged. It's yeah. alleged, so. Who's um, to say how that situation came about? 17-year-old fucking kid acting tough. You don't know how old he is, dude. Yeah. He fucking starts coming at you. Fucking, what are you going to do? Not fucking punch a motherfucker that's coming at you and swinging on you or something. You know yeah. I mean? and I don't know if that's what happened. I don't know if he fucking swung for it. I don't know. I have you to know? know what happened. Who knows? Yeah. I, it I could have been. Yeah. to judge that situation. It could have been like completely self-defense. Yeah. You know, it could have been. Who knows? Yeah. And and that if he's hooping with some kid, then he, that kid knows who he is. Yeah. You know what I mean? He I'm knows. Yeah. Him he knows there's a bag coming from if he hits him, he might get a bag. He just might. John might be like, all right, here you go. Yeah. Here's 1.2. Just shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> this is the the shut the fuck up fund. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see what ends up happening with Ja. Um, for right now, he's he's out. Um, the worst possible time for the Memphis Grizzlies. Say, bro, that's insane. Worst possible time. Um, they'll probably still make the playoffs because they're – you know, so far in, I mean, they're the number two seed in the West right now. So they, they have, their record is pretty good still. Well, without any charges or, <clears throat> or anything, how long do you think they'll actually suspend him? Depends. It depends on if this is it or if there's other stuff too that we just don't, haven't heard of yet. The way it sits right now, I bet you it won't be any more than two more games unless some, some shit comes out until he gets actually charged or something. Two more games. They got to get him back on the court, bro, without any fucking charges. What, what, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Two more. I, I, I would say two to five. Yeah. Two to five. Yeah. How many games are left? About 20. Oh, okay. I thought there was a little bit less games left. It's still pretty, you know, the last 25% of the season. Yeah. So it's it's the important most important time of the year for sure. Yep. Uh, we'll see what happens to poor old Jaw. Looking doom doom. Sell your cards <laughs> if you can. If you can, or wait till he comes back. Or probably, wait. Probably better to wait. No, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Don't panic yet. Not quite yet. It's not the eject button yet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You never know, bro. <laughs> Come find out he actually did shoot somebody or some shit. Yeah. Mm, man. Fuck, no, he didn't have the balls for that. No, I don't think. I, <laughs> I, would, I don't know. I wouldn't think, but who knows anymore. Yeah. It's hard to surprise me anymore with this shit that comes out. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, you get drunk, act like an idiot. Who knows? It happens. I I mean, what? how old is he? It's like 23, maybe 22. Oh, my God. When I was 22, 23, Ooh. dude, I was in the club acting the fool. Pretty dumb. Pretty dumb. <laughs> Pretty fucking stupid, dude. I couldn't even begin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> couldn't begin to tell you how many fights. and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, d- I don't think I waved a gun around in there before. No, I, but, I no. never had a gun. I had guns waved at me or even pointed huh? at me and even possibly... May or may have been shot in my general direction, but <laughs> I don't know if it was at me per se, but right, <laughs> it was at the group I was in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So I, yeah, yeah. They sometimes forget how young these guys are, especially in basketball. Mm-hmm. That's especially true. In basketball. Especially they could do like one year now. I and think baseball too, I guess. But yeah, yeah. Baseball players are usually a little more chill. Yeah, seems like it, huh? Yeah. It's crazy how that how that is. Football players get into some crazy shit. Basketball players. Baseball players, not so much. I mean, sometimes, but not. A little bit, but yeah. not, not as usually often. Usually more like domestics and shit because they, right. they made a bunch of babies when they're like fucking 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but ba- basketball and football players are more, like, thugged out. A little bit. Seems like it. Seems like it. But, dude, is it uh, is it that time, dude? Yep. Is it that time? Well, good night. It's time! Cool. So, um... The uh, prelims and early uh, early prelims were actually had some pretty decent fights the other day that we uh, didn't catch the um, just because didn't make it back to town in time. Yeah, you were uh, too busy getting dope ass Nikola Jokic cards. Yeah, dude, that was actually fun. That's fucking awesome. That was pretty fun. I wasn't gonna stop, but uh, the homeboy Anthony had texted me and asked if I was gonna make it, and I was like. <laughs> you talked me into it. It's literally like three minutes off of the fucking highway to get there. So yeah, it really is. I was like, yeah. oh, I'll stay for a half hour. About fucking almost an hour and a half later, I was like, I better hit the road. <laughs> Shout out to the Iron Lion too. Yeah, um, no, that was fucking fun. It's a it's a collectible shop in Northern Colorado Springs, and they have sports cards. They have comics. Um, they have Pokemon cards. They have a lot of. A lot of different stuff in there. It's a really nice shop. Collectible, like, figurines and shit. Some oh, dope man. Dope-ass fucking, Fuck like, yeah. statue fucking things. They almost popular. look like they're, like, out of pewter. Like sculpt- and sculptures like, yeah, and shit, dude. basically. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah, they have a lot of cool shit in there. Um, if you're in the spring, Colorado Springs area, definitely check them out. Oh, yeah. They're a sight to see. It's a nice shop, too. Yeah, it's very nice. It's all wood. Everything's all, like, um, like carved out of wood like yeah. it, it's a beautiful it's shop classy in there mm-hmm. and the people there are dope too man they're, they're really cool. really cool for sure i'm sorry dude jump no, in. no 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 okay hey, you're good uh so for as ufc wise like i said the prelims and early prelims were both uh there were some good fights on there this was a stacked card all the way throughout uh the early prelim fight that was noticeable was uh ian gary uh knocked out keenan song uh, Ian Gary, I think he's like 11 and 0, 12 and 0. So he's got some rookie cards this year. So he's kind of he's somebody to keep an eyeball on. That was that was a welterweight match. Uh, then the rest of the uh, prelims, we had Cody Garbrandt, who uh, I didn't even realize was fighting. He used to be one of the bigger names. He's definitely a fan favorite, but he's gotten his fucking ass kicked quite a few times in some of his last fights. So. Mm. He actually uh, won uh, in what was apparently uh, kind of a yawn fest decision, but he won, so uh, maybe he might make a little bit more of a name for himself again. Uh, then you got a mel- uh, me- uh, see uh, middleweight uh, Drickus Duplessis, uh, who's nineteen and two, knocked out Derek Brunson. Derek Brunson's kind of one of the OGs, so that was no uh, no small feat there. He's another. I'm pretty sure he's rookie in the, in the this year's cards, so. Uh, there's some rookies who are kind of been making some moves. Doing some stuff, huh? Yeah. And like I said, they're in UFC, I've said before, just because they have rookie cards this year doesn't necessarily mean they're rookies. They've right. fought in other promotions. They are. They have, like I said, he's a rookie with a 19-2 and two record. Right. You know, yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. That's a lot of a lot of fights already. Yeah. So yeah. He's, a, he's a fairly experienced dude, obviously, but they didn't have he didn't have any UFC cards until now. Yeah. So. Uh, women's flyweight was Aman- Amanda Hibas. Uh, she decisioned Vivian Arujo. Uh, Hibas is another one uh, that she's one of my favorite women fighters, and I didn't even realize she was on the prelims. So, honestly, uh, the card was so stacked that I hardly even looked into the prelims and uh, and whatnot. And I kind of wish I had, but it's okay. I wouldn't have been able to really watch anyway. I mean, I guess I could have skipped trade night, but I would have been all sad, bro. <laughs> I am fucking stoked to have gotten those Joker cards, man. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Then we had, in the main event, the first fight, which we uh, also missed. Uh, I probably could have fired it up, but I was still unpacking and kind of yeah, kind of doing my back-in-town dabs and shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Got to uh, do a little, little dabby, dude. Dab yeah. or two. So it was a uh, uh, let's see it was a middleweight bout between Bona Calvert and Jamie Pickett, and Bona Cal won that one. Uh, he's he's uh, kind of one of the new hypes. He was the guy from the Contender series, and he's won a couple of fights now. So he's kind of uh, he's gonna have a lot of hype behind him. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna be a hype train probably. Uh, those guys that come from the Contender series, obviously they're trying to. That's kind of the point. Right, you know what I mean, so <clears throat> they're working them up into it. They're gonna promote them. They're gonna, 
It may not seem fair to some of the other guys, but that's just how it works. It's a business. That's what it is, man. They, they made a name for themselves on that show before they ever made the UFC. I mean, it is what it is. Right. Uh, then a lightweight, there was a Mateusz Gamrot. He decisioned uh, Jalen Turner, the tarantula. That was a pretty decent fight. I think that was the first fight we watched. Yeah, sure. yeah. And I think that one probably could have kind of went either way, but it, um, he won, and it was a decent fight. And then the uh, welterweight was Shavkat Rachmanov versus Jeff Neal. Um, that was a that was a pretty damn good fight too. Uh, a lot of people were kind of shitting on Shavkat, even though he won and kind of dominated that fight. They were saying he has a bunch of holes and openings or whatever, and they thought he was gonna like straight up come out and dominate. And it took yeah. him a minute to kind of really uh, sink his sink his hooks in, I guess. But in the end, he ended up choking homie out and put him um, uh, kind of put him to sleep. So yeah, it was uh, it was pretty good. Uh, you know, like I said, he's also another guy with rookie cards this year. Jalen Turner, all these guys, a lot of these guys on this card all had rookie cards this year. So yeah, kind of cool. Uh, if for the collectors, this was a good, yeah. good fight card. Um, a lot of people, like I said, they're a little down on Shavka, even though he won not down, but like, they're just saying he's not quite as good as we thought. I yeah. Guess, even though he won, which is kind of fucked up, but kind of getting second guessed a little tiny bit. Yeah. So, uh, of course the, uh, the next fight was the women's flyweight Alexa, Glos- Alexa Grosso shocked the world when she choked out Valentina Shevchenko. And I, you know, I kind of sort of called that one. I may or may not. <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't like overly confident, but I did say that I was pretty sure she had a chance and that I thought yeah. she was going to win. No, you one, said so. it. You said it on the pod. Yeah, I like, said it on the pod. So if I ever need to go bust out that clip, I can't. Jeremy said, I got receipts, <laughs> motherfucker. I got receipts. So, I mean, I was actually... Uh, I have an autographed card of hers too. So if you really <laughs> want to set me up for that, like $40, $50. Bucks. <laughs> Pump that shit and dump that shit. Pump it and dump it. $45 cards all night long. It's <laughs> funny. Oh, that's fucking awesome. I'm dude. fucking post. Like, uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, that sports card radio dude, he's always posting his PWCC sells. And oh, yeah. Shit, like he is. Little $5 cards and shit, bro. Every time I sell a $20 card, I'm like, what? <laughs> Post it on fucking IG and shit. Fuck yeah, dude. $20 sales. $20 in sales, son. Hell yeah. You got to check out that new Wu-Tang is out, too. That fucking. Oh, that new season is out, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. That, that new American saga on Hulu. Damn, dude, that's They're on a... like episode three or so. I want to say so. Okay, I'm gonna wait. It's I like good to. Shit. I like to watch them all in a row, dude. I, I hate watching it and then waiting till next week. The cliffhangers, bullshit, makes me crazy. I hate when I catch up. I can't. I can't deal with the cliffhanger shit. Yeah, that shit sucks. <laughs> so the main event of the night, John Jones whipped up Cyril Gone pretty quickly. Uh, Pieced him up a couple times and slapped him in a little choke, choke, put him to sleep. <laughs> uh, kind of made light work of him, honestly. He really uh, did. And uh, put the heavyweight on notice. Uh, Stipe is going to get his shot, which is only fair, uh, but nobody's really giving him a chance. Stipe should have been the one to fight in the first place. He's the one that got robbed with the whole fucking Ngano thing. So uh, that fight should have happened a long time ago, and because Ngano and UFC couldn't figure shit out, now, yeah, now Ngano's a bitch, according to everybody. <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden he's a bitch. Now he's a bitch. Now yeah. you're a bitch. Even though he fucking knocked out half the heavyweight division cold, but like fucked whatever. everybody up, but he's a bitch. So you know they couldn't figure it out. I'm not sure what the fuck that guy's gonna do. He wants to be able to box. Apparently, he was going to try and box Tyson Fury or some shit. Or oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard so. that. Yeah. I don't even know. Uh, boxing is just such a fucking gimmicky show anymore anyways. It's it's not really even exciting. It, it's, I don't know. It's all about the uh, WWE sell of the show, the, the yeah hype of it and then it's so boring dude boxing has been boring for a long fucking time yeah if you catch an exciting boxing match then it's like awesome but they're few and far between yeah you know it's 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 pretty lame i haven't been into boxing forever dude yeah since 
early Pacquiao days. And they make so much money, dude. Yeah. It's insane. Oh, my God. And that's why a lot of these UFC guys are pissed because they make so much money to do boxing, and boxing sucks. And You know, they can go and box one fight and make more than they won made in their whole fucking career. Yeah, Connor did that. Mm-hmm. Connor made that move. And then once he did it, then everybody else is like, well, fuck, why can't I? Yeah, I might as well. Might as well. I'll go get beat up for a couple mil. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, I don't know. I, I do wish him gone to luck. I, I thought he was a badass motherfucker. I've seen him knock some fools fucking practically t- to the fuck moon. So Yeah. Hopefully he joins a MMA organization and fights again because I don't want to see him box. I yeah. really don't. Well, I mean, I'll probably watch it, but not enthusiastically. Right. Almost like uh, as a fucking, as, as like a obligation. <laughs> right. You know? It's like, well, we have the podcast. We probably <laughs> probably should watch it so we could talk about it. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same like when I watched the Seahawks and Patriots Super Bowl, bro. That was one of the most impressing days of my life, dude. But I still wa- forced myself to watch it. Yeah. That was rough. <laughs> That was fucking I rough. Was sad, bro. I was I could not snap out of it, dude. I was literally depressed sitting there like watching it like <laughs> I wouldn't even let myself get excited, bro. I was, I hated both of those teams so bad, especially after what the Seahawks had done to us the year before. I couldn't root for the Patriots. I wouldn't allow myself to, so. Yeah. Yeah, it that sucked. was that was awful. <laughs> it was awful. But I'll, I'll tell you what, it was all worth it with the, when you saw that look on fucking Richard Sherman's face, bro. When he threw that interception at the goal line and he went, <laughs> dude, that was the best ever. Yeah. After he was talking so much shit about the Broncos and just clowning. And it, oh, it felt good, dude. I was like, oh. I almost hate to say it, but thank you, Tom Brady. I do hate Richard <laughs> Sherman. I did. Hate, and he was fucking good as fuck for a while. He oh, yeah. Off. He was very fucking good. Went, went loco for a minute. He cracked a little bit. He did crack. Yeah. So next week, fucking UFC wise, you got a uh, little fight night. Uh, nothing, nothing overly exciting. But uh, Saeed Nurmagomedov versus Jonathan Martinez. I think I mentioned these last week. Uh, and Piotr Jan versus Mirab Uh That should be that one should be a pretty good fight. And then they rescheduled the Nikita Krylov versus Ryan Spam fight that got canceled last week for this one. So. That one should be a banger, too. Uh, not a ton of uh, known or big movement. Uh, Saeed, is, Saeed is probably the bigger name. Piotr Jan, bigger name. But uh, not a ton of guys that are in quick, rapid uh, hev- uh, championship contention or anything like that. So, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll see what goes on there. Uh, 286 should be nice. That's going to be Leon Edwards versus Usman. Oh, nice. So, and then the rematch, huh? Yeah, there's some other good fights on that, but, you know, that's another one that a guy like Usman, uh, after what he did, he deserves the immediate rematch. Yeah, for Just sure. Just like Valentina, she pretty much deserves the immediate rematch. Right. You know, and Nunez. Nunez deserves yeah. the immediate rematch. Yeah, for sure. People like that when they held the title and for multiple defenses. Izzy. You got to give him a chance. <clears throat> Izzy's yeah. got his rematch. Coming soon too, yep. isn't that like two eighty seven or is like coming up quick uh, here? Yeah, that's I think so. Yeah, Not positive date on that one, but yeah, it's it's set. So, so yeah, uh, the Ultimate Fighter should be starting to air too. I think with Connor and uh, and um, Michael Chandler, so that should be starting to air here pretty soon. So I'll I'll probably try and catch some of that and see how that goes. See how much of an ass those guys are making it for themselves. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> You're not doing it. You're not pulling your weight. You got to get the fuck out. So apparently there was some drama on that. I mean, that, but they don't start showing that till it's over. Yeah. They, they, the way they show it one episode at a time, people think it's like happening as you're watching it. Right. But it's all been decided like a month before you ever even see the first episode, really. Mm-hmm. They just keep it in the wraps and they make everybody sign confidentiality agreements and all that shit. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's about it for UFC, I guess. There should be some exciting shit coming up. Obviously, that last that last card was dope. It would have been cool to see even the prelims and everything else. So yeah, that was a good card. Yeah. The the highlight of the whole thing though was when hell. After that, I didn't care no more about my balls hurting. <laughs> and he fucking kicked John Jones right in the balls, dude. Yeah. They come out immediately, just kicks him right in the balls. I was like, <laughs> damn. <laughs> And he was wearing, dude, he was wearing a tiny little thing. 
Yeah. Well, he looked like a fucking banana hammock. <laughs> and he just walks in and is like, fuck you and your big giant dick. <laughs> Boom. I was like, holy shit, dude. That was violent. I was watching it. I don't. It wasn't UFC. It was a. It was just a. It was a video on IG or something, but it was from some uh, MMA fight somewhere, and this guy fucking uh, cheap shot. He kept cheap shotting right after the bell. They'd be like, and then the ref would kind of go in to break him up, and boom, homie would cheap shot him like literally at least a second after the bell. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, on the step, and he hit him like two, three times like that, and fucking. So finally, like towards the end of the fight, you just see fucking homie fucking load up and just. <laughs> right in his fucking dick, dude. And he just goes, bam. He's like, yeah. He's like, he was trying to fucking kick him in his cack, bro. <laughs> I'm oh, sure he got shit. a point, point deducted for that shit, but had to. And honestly, <laughs> kind of probably be disqualified. <laughs> yeah. You're going to kick somebody as hard as you can right in the fucking dick and DQ. Bro, that's pretty fucking, that's pretty fucking bad. <laughs> It's pretty bad, and he was cheap shotting him, but it wasn't like that. He was he was punching him in his face, right? His head, right. Like he <laughs> went he went full bore. He's like, well, take that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna stomp on your ass. Oh my goodness, Marvin, you didn't have no marbles. <laughs> Stomped on his marbles. Stomped right on those marbles. Oh man, nice. Nice, but yeah, dude, that's all I got for the pod, man. You got anything else you want to hit up this week? No, I was going to mention, um, if anybody is interested, hit us up. I've had a, a couple people, and by a couple, I mean literally like two people, maybe three, uh, ask about like a shirt or some shit. So, oh, really? If anybody else is interested, uh, and would ever be interested in maybe rocking a shirt or, uh, Maybe buying a little shirt or something, we would we would make it as affordable as possible. But show us a little message, or uh, you know, if you ever would be interested in something like that, uh, let us know. And maybe when next time we order a couple shirts, we can get a couple extras or something. So yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, that'd be we, dope. We, that's something we've talked about before, but uh, you know, we don't want to go buy a bunch of shirts for no reason. But if, if people are actually willing to wear them or rock them, you know, who knows? Hit yeah. us up. Um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Nice. Or if anybody ever wants just a sticker or a little bit of swag or something, throw us a little message. I'll I'll mail you out. A, I'll stick a fucking sticker in a fucking envelope and mail it to you or something. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, fucking a. You know, That'd fucking be cool. Take fucking but a few minutes out of the day and a fifty cent st- stamp. Shit, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. I'm always taking my ass to the mail, uh, the post office anyway. Yeah, so yeah, a. So absolutely. Throw us a little message. We'll, we'll mail you. A, I mean, a little sticker or something maybe. If you're cool enough, who knows? You might get a little something in your package. You might get a little, <laughs> little card in there or something. No, you never know. Or a, <laughs> or a weed seed or something. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <coughs> just kidding. That's illegal. That's illegal, and it's sending things over <laughs> state lines, and we're not doing that, goddammit. <laughs> no, fuck yeah, dude. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you guys for tuning in, checking us out, um, watching the YouTube video. Um, however you consume our, our content, man, we fucking appreciate you. Um, thank you so much for everything, and uh, we'll be talking to you next week. Fucking A. All right, guys. Peace. Peace.